when coming here, um, I thought about the beginning of this event. And in the beginning, there was one Polish guy, but it was not me. So um, um, I don't know if you know the name Maciek Maczkowski or Maciej Maczkowski. Uh, he was among the, the founding members, if, that, if that's a proper term. So I asked Maciek, who's been a mentor for me and a friend, uh, to prepare something. But Maciek is now retired, he lives in the forest, he doesn't have a smartphone, so definitely no recording options. So the video was not, not in question, so he prepared a little presentation. And I would like to ask Ed Hartin to, to read his presentation for you, maybe also share a few words about uh, Maciek. Ed, if you, if you could. And maybe we can uh, give Ed uh, Stefan's microphone. Shall I start? Yeah, yeah, that's a surprise. For everyone, including Ed until yesterday. <laughs> I'll tell you why I asked him in a moment. Okay, let's go. I don't know that I can do this in a, in a Polish accent, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to, to convey the message. Hello, I'm Magic Majowski. Uh, greetings to all members of IFIW 2018. Ten years ago, I was a member of this first meeting workshop. Why me? Because I was the first person in Poland who started training for compartment fires with a container. History dates back to October 1992. I had the pleasure to learn in Swedish firefighter school in Rosenberg. Uh, had the exercises in the container. It was very interesting. Understood that this was a good way to teach about compartment fires. Two days later, or two years later, in autumn 1994, we built in Poland our first container and we started to teach. The next step, uh, the next big step, uh, was 10 years ago at the first IFIW meeting. Special thanks and great respect for Stefan Svensson. People of different parts of the world could exchange their knowledge and experience. It was wonderful, amazing, and exciting. And there's a photo of our, of our first group. Next event important for me was already in Poland in 2013. Uh, my friend and successor, Szymon Kogogor, uh, did what uh, I could not uh, succeed. My first CFPT workshop for Polish instructors with participation uh, of two of my friends from Australia, Shan Rafael and John McDonough. And he sends his thanks. Year after Simon organized the International Conference and Workshop in Poland, uh, the last with my participation, IFIW 2014. Now everything is behind me. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, now everything is behind me, but I'm not concerned about the future. I know that I have good, wise successors. I hope you'll have a great meeting full of work and exchange of experience. I wish you the best, good luck, and goodbye, friends. Thank you, Ed. And since it's being recorded, and I will share that recording with Maciek, how about we give a little applause for him? <laughs> Thank you. So, now, why I asked Ed Hartin? You know, because I have a stiff walk today, because I did squatting with weights with Chief Hartin, and I wanted to see if he has stiff legs as well. Well, he doesn't. <laughs> that's, that's telling me something, suggesting me something. I should get out of desk more often. Also, I, I needed the joke, and uh, James Mendoza, whom I knew before from the internet and, and Facebook, uh, shared the joke with me, but unfortunately I didn't understand it, so <laughs> I, I cannot share it with you. <laughs> but ask him in the, in the break, take me with you as well. Maybe if I hear it two times, then I'll be able to, to get the joke. So, interior fires in buildings and in the hearts, a Polish example. Why that title? Um, just... It, it, it connects a little bit to what Ed was explaining yesterday, how we understand things. I have a friend who is a close friend of mine, but is not a firefighter. 
And when we say enclosure fires or internal fires, we have a, we have a good word for that. Probably all of us non-native speakers just say something that is not exactly what a native speaker would say or choose a term sometimes. But it, it, when he heard that, he asked me, what's that? Is that something that is burning inside you? Well, I said, definitely it's not a heartburn. It's your heart burning. Um, so what do you think? What, what's that? What, what did I have in mind by uh, fires in the hearts? Please. Are, what are you expecting from me? Because, frankly, I knew what I want to say. And then at some point, Professor Svensson asked me for, a, for an abstract. So I delivered the abstract. I was very busy. I forgot about it. Then I came here doing my presentation. I said, what did I have in mind? OK, I have to, I have to prepare something. I prepared something. And today, I looked in the abstract. And it's in line. So it's good. <laughs> it's, it's, we're, we're saved. Um, what I always want to say in a meeting like this is what I feel in my heart, actually. Um, because we sort of take for granted who we are and why we're here. It has to do something with the fire burning in our hearts. But the effect of that, especially of that, is it's something that needs to be appreciated. And I would like to say that in the beginning. Uh, I have great respect for the audience that I'm standing in front of today because you represent the, the community of people who save people's lives. So probably we have hundreds of saved lives here sitting in the, in, in the classroom, directly and indirectly, through hands-on actions, through creating of systems, through research that is giving us the, the knowledge uh, to do that. So my greatest respect for all of you. And it's a difficult moment. I, the moment is even more difficult when, when I'm tired. The emotions get to me. So if my voice shakes, uh, those who have heard me before know that happens. I need a few breaths. And I am really tired because it was a fantastic time. I cannot say a week, but almost a week. Uh, great time. A lot of interactive uh, discussions, uh, great interactions. And uh, it's almost like you want to not to go to sleep because you're, you're wasting time, basically. Now, that's, that's already not, not sane and not healthy. So I did sleep three or four hours per, per day. But that's why I'm tired. And if I start saying nonsense, just I have an excuse. <laughs> OK. So yes, I'm from Poland. And I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, Yes, here I am. So I'm a, a firefighter, first of all. That's why I'm here. That's, that's why I'm meeting with other firefighters. Currently, my position is a senior officer of the state fire service. We have a centralized system. That will be important in my presentation later on. My current rank is a major, so it's equivalent to Polish junior brigadier. And I, I'm a fire safety engineer, and I also have masters in that domain also occupational health and safety expert, and uh, a qualified teacher. That means if they sack me, I can go to teach at school, basically. <laughs> I don't know what, but something. Uh, as it is, it's been mentioned, I was appointed the national coordinator for uh, the project of fire instructor training. So indirectly also, I am, let's say, involved in creating the system of CFBT and everything that it entails, which I would like to show in my presentation. Just recently, on uh, 4th of May, we had a celebration on the occasion of the International Fire, uh, Firefighter Day. And I was appointed deputy, um, deputy head of the training division that I worked at for 10 last years, uh, including, uh, excluding one episode, one year of episode at CERN fire and rescue service. I'm also the founder and the president of CVTPL. I'm saying president because we are attempting to register this, this, this uh, entity as, uh, as an association to create more uh, possibilities. And why is that? It will also be explained in the, 
in the presentation. Uh, I'm also the vice president of the regional branch of Association of Fire Engineers and Technicians. It's also important for my presentation. And I was the organizer of IFIW 2014 in, in Olsztyn as well. So that's the most difficult part. Talking about oneself is, is what is this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it may sound not really nice, not really accessible, but I'm explaining this to tell you that uh, there's been a number of initiatives that connect to these different roles because we all have, all have different roles. I'm here as a, as a firefighter, although I was not delegated by my organization and, and so on. So there's a, a lot of people that I like to send acknowledgements to for being where I am and you'll find it very interesting, but it's my individual path. And as years pass, I noticed that a lot of people have influence on me. Majority of them are on this slide and some of them will appear in the presentation. So that's Maciek in the beginning. Then we have in white helmet. He's my very good friend, currently a professor of automatics, totally not a firefighter theme, and a volunteer firefighter with whom I started writing and discovering all, all the fire ground safety stuff. Then we have uh, Pierre-Louis Lamballet, probably everybody knows him. As for sympathy or, or good feelings, that's totally individual. I had some great uh, exchanges with, with that man and, and uh, I will say that he pushed me a lot of times to, uh, to get better. Then I have my former, uh, former head of training, uh, Marek Engel, who just retired. He's been uh, in service for 39 years. So the depth of experience and knowledge he left behind is, is uh, uh, what's the word? Inestimable, inestimable. Good? Native speakers? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then we have uh, Shannon John who came at some point and, and helped us to see that we were a little bit like children in the, in the forest or in the fog. So they gave us some direction. Then a year later, we, I've met another group of fantastic people. And we, we see Chief Ed Hartin and Director Steve Kerber. Um, directly or indirectly, they supported me a lot. And, and UL's support has been really instrumental in, I would say, giving us credibility like served on a silver plate. Basically, you know, we could fight for many years to, to get through with the message, but we organized one event with them and everybody suddenly started listening to us. So it was really, really, uh, really good. Then Stefan Svensson, who is the, the, the person behind the idea of this exchange. And as years pass, I see that it's absolutely essential that science and theory meet because the world is in the middle. And in Europe, we've been looking very much to, to CVT Belgium. Karel is the, the person representing with his team. And the, the approach and the attitude they have was really very motivational for us. And we also copied some, some things. And my good friend George, where are you? My Greek brother, who also helped us a lot. You'll see him on some pictures of things that happened in Poland. And uh, that's... that's let's say the, the people who came to my mind when I was finishing this slide, it was 3 a.m., I think. So it's not yesterday, it's today. Um, so that also tells you how much I slept today. So yeah, I need a sip. And uh, other people will be mentioned in the presentation. There's not enough space on that slide to, to, to mention them all, but they also deserve a round of applause. So, Poland-Sweden relations. Do we have any? Do you know any? We had a common king at some point in history. First he was in Poland, then he went to Sweden. Uh, probably that's why the Swedish um, citizens invited themselves over <laughs> some, some years later. What has been called the Swedish deluge historically. 
Uh, but apart from that little incident, which I will go back to, uh, especially after Second World War, we had, we, we've had since then great um, relations. Sweden is the most, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the first country that is cooperating economically with Poland uh, in Scandinavia. So this is the current map and my place is somewhere here, so somewhere here where the pointer is. But I'm not sure if you know that Lund University, the faculty of, uh, don't know the name, connected with fire, let's say, has been cooperating with the main school of fire service, the, the officer school, the academy uh, of Poland for a number of years. So we sent over cadets here for some exchanges. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. That's a couple people per year, so maybe not very significant, but uh, or every other year. But uh, here's an inter interesting thing. Coming back to the Swedish deluge, a Swedish table, we say in Poland, and that's, well, let's try Swedish. Smurgasbord. Good? <laughs> yes? Okay. So what's that? Okay, you already know what's that. That's something that generally is called a buffet. Yeah, so there's food on the table, no chairs, and uh, so why is that? So where Swedish was doing, the Swedish people were doing sides up in Poland, and then they especially like one castle, uh, which was not easy to, to get to. So they said, okay, you go out of this castle, Mr. Governor, and have breakfast with us. That was a trick. <laughs> so he said, mm, not really, you know, I don't feel like it. Well, can we eat then? Can we eat something then? We'll eat alone, just let us in. Mm, how about I give you tables outside? So, and, and wanting to, to also show his uh, position and ego, he did not provide any chairs. So ever since, a buffet is called a Swedish table in Poland. And that happened a long time ago, so let's forget it. <laughs> um, but quite recently, as it been uh, mentioned, it has been mentioned this morning, there was a huge, uh, say, disastrous fire in, in Sweden, a number of fires. And a number of uh, countries sent a response to, to Sweden, including uh, Poland. We, said, uh, we sent a lot of people. Actually, on Thursday, the day before it, it was arranged, there was a preparedness check. And I'm in one of those modules. So they also checked me and I said, am I going to Sweden? No, I need a holiday. And then I'm going, not going to the IFIW. Ah, hell, okay. If they say me, then I'll just stay stay longer. Uh, finally, we didn't go, but our colleagues went. They went uh, to a place. They were put, the base of operation was uh, created in a, in a sports club. So it was a fantastic host nation support uh, because we could also use the, the, the infrastructure. So no peeing in the, in the containers kind of thing, you know, in the, with the chemicals and stuff. It's, well, it's life, but it's firefighters' life, but uh, we didn't have to do it. It was great. The, the fire was really disastrous. Uh, we had to learn some Swedish. Let's, I learned some Swedish, you learned some Polish. Uh, Good morgen, dzień dobry. Let's give it a try. You can all try together, it's easier to hide. Dzień dobry. Fantastic. Okay, uh, maybe. Jak are in Brandman from Poland? Good? Yeah. Okay. Jestem strażakiem z Polski. Okay, let's skip that. Um, but a number of challenges arose and they were fantastically dealt with. Uh, Swedish host nation support was absolutely tremendous. And they were technical, they were philosophical sort of, uh, you know, challenges, but they were overcome, and at the end, uh, we, we, had, we were, the, the Polish firefighters were honored by the visit of the Minister of the Interior, of the Swedish Princess. I'm sorry for the quality of, of those pictures, but the only ones that I was able to find. And such a nice uh, drawing was created in the end. So I thought in the beginning that I have more, 15 more minutes than I actually do, because I didn't, I didn't realize this should be a coffee break. But I've prepared a little bit more to show you. I have a very good friend who is a 
I'm a very professional fire service photographer, so I'll just show you how it looked through the eyes of Polish uh, fire service. This is just a couple minutes, but I think it's important. My colleagues also shared with me that they really appreciated the, the, the contact that they had with the liaison officers and the fact that two of them stayed prolonged their working time for a couple of days. They would normally go off shift after seven days. They prolonged the time of service in order not to break the, the already established relation. So they stayed longer. It, it was, Fantastic because you can imagine that after a couple of days you 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 get a new liaison officer and then sort of you have to establish a lot of things again. That that was a great learning opportunity for us. A lot of experience was gained, and uh, well, let's not hope that any side will need the other side's help. But if we do, Poland's ready and I'm sure Sweden's ready also. All right, I think we'll not watch it until the end. That gives us, that gives us uh, the idea of the, of the event and of the, the magnitude. So I said I'm from Olsztyn. Olsztyn is uh, situated in uh, north of Poland. It's called Mazurian Lake District. It's also called the Land of Thousand Lakes, which is a lie. There's more than 2,000. And, uh, okay, that slide again. And uh, we were the participant of the New Seven Wonders of Nature. And I'm, I'm laughing, we took eighth place. So, almost made it to the final. But this is one of the... Uh, the advertising campaigns that was created. So we surely have Spanish people here, 
people from Holland, Alaska, that's not a country, yeah? It's, uh, okay, from the US, Croatia, almost made it, Amazonia, uh, Finland, uh, Italy, Tanzania, and uh, Australia. Yeah, yeah. Just come over, visit Mazuri. <laughs> you know, full package. Um, so my place is Olsztyn, where Copernicus used to live. Uh, you know, it's the guy who stopped the sun and moved the earth. Uh, basically, <laughs> that's what we say. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's how we say it. Okay, so why did I chose this topic? And why is there a hashtag 7 bar? It's simple, isn't it? We already know. Uh, you can't read the label from inside the jar. Uh, Magic knew that, and I think he had a little mirror, or like, like, or, or something else. Well, maybe it's because his name, Magic, yeah. He had some magic in him that he could pick outside and say, "Hey, something's wrong with this picture. Why are we doing things that some of the people already decided they're not correct?" So he recorded this video, and seven bar is now a single word that everybody knows in Poland. Seven bar. So what should the nozzle pressure be uh, at the tip of the nozzle? Was Matching was asking in 2008 at IFIW, 10 years ago. So. When we use the water to extinguish the fire, it must be more than seven bar. Seven bar. That's one word, yeah? Okay, did that change since then? Uh, we've seen that. Did, did it change since then? No, some things don't change, yeah? Some things never change, which is sometimes very good. Okay, so uh, a quick overlook of history. In 92, as Maciek mentioned in his presentation delivered by Ed Hartin, uh, Polish firefighters, like many firefighters from different countries, went to Sweden. And just two years later, Maciek, there he is, believe it or not, he's on the right, no, on, the, on your left, on his <laughs> right. Um, they built the first container in Poland. But soon after, the, the head of my division, whom you can see here, also went to Sweden, actually to Revinge, and we also built, he built a container in Olsztyn, and you can, uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic to see that after so many years, I came to work at this place. They were doing dolls houses, uh, aquarium uh, explosions, and so on. So this is something I learned in Poland. But there's a but. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> my best flashover video is actually from a, a load like that. And it's a flashover. And then it's, it's OK to say it's a flashover cell, which should not be, of course. So I, I've th I thought about it a lot of times, and I came to a simple conclusion. Instructor qualifications, instructor competencies is what we failed at. So moving uh, forward in history, there's the already mentioned and displayed um, IFIW 2008. The beginning was a very important time, but unfortunately, this also what Maciek said, for some reason he did not have the... Uh, um, what didn't he have? I don't know. They didn't listen to him. So I think also I figured it out as well why, or maybe not exactly why, but there was something that I thought needs to be done or a number of things that to, to push it forward and I believe it's it's been successful and I will try to to extract what that was towards the end of that presentation and I will be the the second part the fires in the heart okay just at the time here's me is do I look like myself it's a long time ago I had two kids since then so the, the, the deprivation, sleep deprivation really does uh, 
uh, strange things to, to people. But here's, uh, I'm not sure if the, the pronunciation is Gaetan or Gaetan Mitanchez. He's a French guy whom I met then. Of course, he's showing something here, something there. So we can all imagine what he's showing. Yeah, If, this, if it's here, then it's good. If it's there, it's, it's not so good. I said, wow, oh, this guy knows a lot. He is like a, he's like a guru, like a scientist. Why don't I, don't I know this? You know? And uh, it was a Raktal. It's funny how things connect because Dietmar, who came to Austin in 2014, which I didn't know at the time, was already head of, of Raktal Training Center in Luxembourg. And that was uh, my something there was a switch in my head that went off into another position because what you see behind was absolutely amazing. What they have there, what they are doing over there. It's not like they have a fire in a single room. That was my, my first contact with multi-container props. We have to get this in Poland. Now, how to do that? Well, it was, that's the story. But the real turning point was this moment. And I was looking one hour for this yesterday in the internet thinking that maybe it's uh, Dario's uh, profile because it's in Croatia. But it says, please share the secret with me. How is it that the creation guys get the best people on their board? And there was a short discussion, and here's John McDonough, the, the rock star of firefighting world, the author of 3D firefighting, writing to me, which I felt at that time. It's like this person is just out of reach and saying, hey, Shimon, don't hesitate to message me for a chat. Maybe I can drop by and visit one day soon. Now, how soon that was, you will see. That's 2012. It's already late, yeah? The world is accelerating, developing, and we're still bending eight, eight millimeter uh, sheets of metal in our containers <laughs> by heating them to enormous temperatures and then applying water. So here we are. That's uh, beginning of June 2013. Here we have John and Shan and a representative of Polish Fire Schools and Training Centers in training. That was not exactly an instructor training. That was, they were showing us the model of training that they are doing. And maybe it's, uh, it's interesting why there are so many people. Because having this opportunity, we, we put half of the group as active participants, but not wanting to lose their opportunity, we also put a lot of observers. You all have to see this, because you'll not believe your eyes. And of course, it was a revolutionary. We were lucky to have a guy from the national headquarters, a very experienced firefighter, long time, commanding on different levels, probably thinking like we all did, well, yeah, we know all about this stuff. And equally, he was surprised very positively surprised and he wrote a very good report and then things started rolling. In that year we've organized the first international conference on structural firefighting with the participation of our two Australian friends and uh, it's ever since then we, we are doing this annually and I'll present this to you as well. And why am I showing the two pictures below? Because at the time, we already were in the process of obtaining containers. Now they really look poorly and so on, or not prepared. But year after, they were already in good condition and ready for, for training. And the gentleman you see over there was, at that time, um, director of the training department at the national headquarters. So main chief's right hand for training. And he heard a number of things at the conference also a demand from people from the audience when they saw what can be done, especially Lucy was uh, demanding, why don't we have this? What is the national headquarters doing? It was really, really, you know, sparks were flying. And then I had to go home. I was exhausted. I had to take care of my family. John and Sean went to a dinner with that guy. I don't know what they told him, but then we started doing things. OK, so first of all, we thought, we have to finish this madness. We have to really ha take a pedagogical approach. So you may seem it's late, but better later than never. Yeah. So we started standardizing our burns. 
it's not maybe representative of what we're doing today. By one look, you know, then half of that stuff will get not burned, basically, yeah, or wasted. So we're, we're, we're a little bit also past that. But definitely it gave us another environment to learn, an environment that is maybe less identical to that fire that we're fighting, but we also realized it's not the, f the, the most important thing. The, the most important thing is being able to cheat the students, yeah? to simulate what we want to simulate. And there are numerous aspects of that about which we heard just a year later from Ed Harden's presentation on, um, don't remember the title. Can you remember? Life fire training and simulation. Yes, life fire training simulation. The f uh, functional and uh, physical aspects of simulation, yes? Yeah, so, so now, we know that, and that's, that's why I'm saying that we are just taking whatever is there, because everything is there, you just need to reach out and, and take it. So we were continuing our work, we started looking at different things, here's one example. Behind you can see already the prop is, is ready and prepared. It was just before IFIW 2014, we started saying, okay, let's give people a little bit of understanding what's happening, and gain, of course, ourselves, what's happening with the positive pressure ventilation, so we did some backyard tests. We did not draw far-reaching conclusions from that, <laughs> but we gained some understanding how things are rolling. But also at the time we realized that sort of each place is left alone and yet we have a centralized um, system. We are, we are the state fire service with national headquarters overseeing 16 regional headquarters overseeing between 15 to probably 30 county headquarters. And that's a pyramid of, of command. Why aren't we doing things from the national level? And that's what sh sh we should start. So that, we were discussing that all the time. I was telling that to Jacek Borowski all the time. And one day I was jogging around my training center and I get, hold on, I get what? What did I get? I lost my pointer, I get a phone call from Jacek Borowski. I cannot catch my breath, I'm <sighs> breathing heavily. Yes, director, what's going on? You know what? We're getting funding and we're buying fire trucks all the time and we're spending millions. I've been thinking about what you said, what you said on numerous occasions because we've met. Maybe we should deliver a, a burn cell to every training facility in Poland. I said, I'm going to call you back in 10 minutes. I went back to office, shortcut, steadied my breath, and we had a conversation. And yes, it was finally happening. So sort of the dream from 2008 was happening. Yeah? When I, what I saw in Ragtal, what people were doing already all, all over the world, probably Sweden, for Sweden it's... Uh, it's uh, I'm surprising that it's uh, so late, but again, we're, we're progressing on that path. So he said, can you design something? We'll of course have a group. So we had a group, we left the fantasy go loose. We built something from 15 containers for every uh, training center. Then we realized that we have to put out the public tender. So a company would like to earn some money on that actually. So we have to limit our fantasies a little bit. And then we, finished with eight, uh, no, nine <laughs> containers. So we took the model that was already existing and was giving us ready solutions and we built on that based also on our um, experience because we took the T-cell with the tactical part attached to it and then we added one story which gave us really fantastic training opportunities. I'll, I'll just share with you one. If you enter from first floor, you are now training a basement fire. And it's, it's really the, 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 the chimney effect on the staircase was really, really realistic. It didn't have to be burning your, your boots or, or whatever. It was just enough that it was hot. And when you're going in a hot chimney down the stairs, that's realistic. And your hose is staying there and you're thinking, will it burn, will it not? Well, it never burned, but... Uh, uh, okay, so we designed it and we, were starting, we started preparing for a public tender. Just about that time, we had a IFIW 2014. So here's the general, two-star general. That's the highest rank in, 
in, in, in uh, Polish fire service, the national fire chief. And we had a conference, videos of that you can find on YouTube, but if you put IFIW 2014, now sometimes it mistakes it with Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but put, put that or, or find me on Facebook, I'll, I'll link you. There's two nice presentations. One is uh, delivered by uh, Hans and Sean. It's a dollhouse. Basically, people were learning how to use a dollhouse. It, both are in English. And the other is Karel and John about um, host streams and how can that be explained in scientific manner or science made simple or evidence given to people wanting to use their uh, water stream consciously. If I'm making stuff up, just correct me. <laughs> and here's the, the <coughs> workshop photo. Here's Maciek again, last time, but you'll recognize a number of these people. A fantastic, fantastic uh, crew, uh, fantastic group of people, absolutely mind-blowing discussions, and, uh, and, and then it was over. Time flies really fast. OK, so what do we do? <clears throat> Luckily, I've always had, uh, I, was, I was always fortunate to have smart and understanding uh, bosses. And I'm not saying that because it's being recorded. <laughs> That's true. We were really lucky because they supported all of our ideas. So first of all, we started training firefighters in fire station, bought some uh, decent equipment. At that time, we had to take something. It was a compromise of quality and price. And probably today, maybe the, that could have been another choice. But still, it's, a, it's a, something decent that we did. And we started doing different things. We started also, we began to look at how could uh, instructors training look in our conditions, in our circumstances. So of course, what you see here is, is copied, yeah? Where did I see that? Lassen Nelson's video, yeah? and so on. What's that? That's Carl's whiteboard from, from Rillen Castle. <laughs> so of course everything is, is sort of copied, yeah? But then we had to make adjustments to our um, uh, reality. So a year later in 2015 we decided we have a product ready, now we need to test it on human beings. Now that's illegal, but luckily. Um, so we took cadets, because they were very eager to come <laughs> That, that's not supposed to be funny, but OK. <laughs> um, so we took cadets, and we just ran the program with them. They were very eager, because we already were famous, of course, in Olsztyn, yeah? Uh, the, the little training center in the corner of Poland suddenly uh, became uh, leading in, in those uh, topics and areas. Wow, we have five fire schools in Poland. So that's, how can that be possible? By default, they should not be able to do more than us. Yeah? So where's the problem? It's, it was not in my head, it was in theirs. OK, so we tested it on human beings with positive results. We did some adjustments, and we put the program for signing. It's a five-day program. And they made a nice collage of pictures for us. So you can see we adopted a number of training aids teaching aids, I mean, uh, that we are uh, now using. And with a centralized system like in Poland, um, there's upsides and downsides. If something doesn't want to work correctly, it doesn't work correctly for everyone and everywhere. But if you have a decent solution or a fantastic solution, it's good for everyone. So that's why we said either we start doing things from the top or we will just just burn ourselves out and, and, and struggle all the time. For that reason also, the cadets created the scientific uh, association or gathering, that's how it's called, of, of uh, extinguishing activities. So something that gave them legal uh, possibilities to ask the dean for funding, for delegations, and so on. And since then, They've done really fantastic things, but we can proudly say that we were the reason behind that. So now we're including the people who will come after us, our successors. And I believe that 
that is fundamental, and we just spoke about it yesterday in the workshop. Yesterday, I think, yeah? or the day before. Okay, so how we, how we tackle the problem? Let's take the authors of the training program, because they are not uh, uh, accidental people, and let's create a small group that will start this, a nucleus, if you will. So we gathered the, the authors of the program and we established how are we going to teach our instructors to have one message for everyone because we have, again, a centralized system and we need unification as far reaching as possible. So we trained the leaders, we call them the leaders or senior uh, instructors, and then we trained the trainers. A number of, of trainings were conducted that September 2015 then we start building training props. So I'll give you a training prop from Alston because I have pictures of that. But there was a problem with the public tender, which was then in, in place. A company who was awarded that, <coughs> that delivery did not fulfill it. They were supposed to deliver 22 identical fire, uh, training, live fire training props, out of which they delivered four and sort of collapsed under the weight of that. Uh, they were simply not ready, so that was postponed. But we got four. So what's the training prop? It's a, a burn cell, there's a L cell basically attached to it, then there's a, a, um, a tactical uh, part next to it, and we went two stories up. We differentiated the, the layout of all the rooms, uh, made sure there are two big windows to have good uh, conditions, safer conditions for ladder training, for example. There's a number of features that are in that prop. And we also asked for mannequins, uh, furniture mock-up, uh, roof mock-up, extraction fan from the, from the internal staircase, an external staircase as well, and, uh, and equipment. So what we also put in the tender was that with that, there should come some equipment so that people are not left behind. Because in the program, you already set the minimum for equipment. If you don't have the nozzle, if you don't have this or that or the other thing, you are not supposed to do that training and pretend that you're doing something. And of course, as with public tender, some choices are good, some choices are bad. We had to specify that and maybe uh, there's a uh, individual preference in the nozzle selection. <laughs> Definitely, that's a huge discussion. But as long as you're able to do what you want to do with your nozzle, then I guess it's fine. And one thing that I would like to point out is that we, we wanted the thermal imaging camera that records so that nobody has to buy it additionally, but they all can record their training because one of the didactic um, guidelines in the program was that you're supposed to record your trainings and then review them with your trainees so you have a better understanding of what you're doing. So year 2015, four training props, then collapse. Year 2018, 12 more training props. Last Friday, I commissioned prop number 16 and we're waiting for six more. We will have 22 training props in fire schools and fire training center. Now I find it less important if it's 22, 21, 15, or the 100. What is more important is they are everywhere. Everywhere. We now have a single, single training prop. Okay, it's not perfect. It's a start. We will move forward. But at this stage, we have unified nationally our training system for 30,000 professional firefighters probably 300,000 operational volunteer firefighters, a number of other firefighters. Now the army wants to be build identical training prop because they follow our programs. So I think we're, we're going the good direction. Now we need to move on and see what we cannot do here, but we still need to learn. Okay, so 2015 national CBT program, health and hygiene during operation at fires, interior fire and its spread, be safe, size up, nozzle techniques, host advancement, and search tactics. And the program includes numerous didactic hints and rules, obligatory small-scale demos and large-scale evolutions, knowledge and skills checklists and assessment criteria, detailed description of small and large 
scale practical parts together with learning objectives connected to them, standardized fuel packs, example weekly plan, list of recommended literature. Bang. Signed December 2015 by the National Fire Chief and ever since binding for every firefighter in Poland. So some of the, the things that we are now doing include those and I want to point out that this is in the program and it's not called aquarium. In Polish program, it's called the Giselsons Aquarium. <clears throat> that year I've been to Belgium, so I find these events a great, say, uh, what's the proper word? Not political, but um, promotional uh, assistance in putting forward proposals and being treated seriously because the larger the organization, the more levels, the, less li the, the more likely the message is to disappear in, in all the jungle of things, which I will not mention <laughs> and name. Of course, you all know this gentleman, the third international conference on, on structural firefighting. We had Mats Rosander and present with us, Jens, uh, Michael Reich and uh, um, Joe Starnes from Kill the Flashover. And already we had a number of guys and girls uh, w w wanting more. So I should have mentioned it in the beginning, what is here at the bottom, that mainly I pre I'm presenting in front of you as the CVTPL representative, which is, which is the passion part, which, is, which are the people who want to do more than the minimum. And he, there's a number of things that we have done since then. How are we with time? Because I'm, my hands are not shaking anymore. <laughs> So then the, the, the cadets started organizing their own events. So I just want to show you one example that sort of if you include the, the young ones and the, the senior ones and you try to be welcoming in your approach and you're not trying to be uh, exclusive but inclusive, then all of a sudden it starts working. I guess it's uh, something that is not easily defined but uh, just like we were talking the first day, if you come to a new uh, organization, uh, the less rules, the better. Be nice usually works best. Just be nice, yeah? So here we have Maciek again. That's the vice dean of the main school of fire service. So we were allowed into the National Fire Academy just as a bunch of people that just love what they do. And uh, so we are now being recognized as, generally we know what we are talking about and we are not uh, uh, tripping about it. I think. So we kept on working. 2016, we started developing scenarios uh, for tactical approaches. We, we wanted at that time to focus on three sort of aspects that we thought need more consideration. That's tactical ventilation, rescue with ladders, and thermal imaging. We want to put that into a uh, tactical training program, which is in development, but there's more priorities at this time, so it has to be postponed. And, and you can see that uh, logo appears more and more. We just carry it with, with ourselves and, and, and it is being well, well received. Fourth International Conference on Structural Firefighting. <clears throat> we had Art, where are you? We had Art with us and Craig Weinsheng. Here are the cadets in the, uh, in the top again. Uh, so yeah, my two dear guests who always boost the, 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 the prestige of the conference. Then a year later, uh, fifth international conference on structural firefighting. You may recognize Tor Eriksson here. We had a representative from FLIR, from Angloco. Um, I don't remember exactly, but we're getting more and more interest and more and more uh, guests. That was the, the moment when we signed the documents to start an association, but it's, it's a difficult process. It requires a lot of time, but, but we're slowly working towards that goal. And these are the, the crazy guys who, who don't have enough. Well, not all of them, but the ones who could make it to the conference. So the system, now we're thinking of a system 
And I deliberately put the, the slide with the jar because all your feedback is welcome or all your questions are welcome. Sometimes it's enough to ask a question to make a person understand something. Yeah. So we want to, we, basically there is a system put in place now for professional development and it's that, let's say that first column and in each domain, be it hazmat, rope rescue and so on, there should be an instructor for professional development, delivering basic things that are possible to deliver in a fire station without a lot of training props. And we know we, you can do a lot. You can do demos with the uh, dollhouses. You can train a lot of uh, nozzle practice, host management and so on and so on, even air management and so on. So the, the general approach, sort of imposed by, I do agree, uh, is that first you go through this training and then you get your uh, teacher training for that part. So, so your methodology of uh, structure of firefighting training for fire station and I, I wanted to stress that we will put validation everywhere. Of course, it's not uh, granted that you go through a program and you are this. We, we want to validate everything and everything should be documented. Then if you go through instructor training after receiving the program yourself, then you can become an instructor. Then you should, you're supposed to deliver a number of trainings. Also, we want to include in that system acquired structure burns to document them because we've done a lot of that and we see that fantasy is, is a bad advisor. And I don't know if you know we had Uans and there's a saying, Uan fantasy. Uan was a was a trooper, was a, a kind of a soldier. They were really hard fighters, hard drinkers, hard partiers, and they had fantasy. So it's a saying in Polish, Ulan fantasy. Well, that kind of fantasy that we have in genes is not a good advisor, so we have to be careful. So acquired structure burns, let's say, have higher risk potential. I think you will all agree. So at some point, when you deliver the... Uh, structure of firefighting instructor training under the supervision of a senior instructor, you may become a senior instructor provided that you go through the validation. If you're at that level, um, you, you start being included in, in the discussion about national level uh, solutions for the, for the um, structural firefighting training. Will that become a binding system? We shall see. That's a proposal put forward just before this, uh, this event. And then in place, we will put the system of qualification maintenance. That's periodical uh, trainings, periodical development. And we want to put on paper international exchange because for some reason, we are the, the meatballs bowling in our own sauce, we say. If you don't add anything to meatballs, it will create its own sauce. It's not exactly the most tasty sauce, yeah? It's like the meatball sauce. Add some flavor to it, you know? Some spice. So the system broadly perceived, I believe, should consider workshops, publications, conferences, should be directed towards full-time and volunteer firefighters, should concentrate on morale, on attitudes, should include successors, should uh, look for mentors and should definitely have maintenance of competencies. And we're trying to do that, whatever doesn't work through the fire service, we're trying to push forward through the association. We did a number of fire burns. Here you have Mike Klein from uh, Skovde School, which is now closed as I was informed. But we did a lot of different kinds of uh, light fire burns, including structures we made <laughs> ourselves from boards, and that's why we came up with a number of conclusions, how you should organize this, how you should document this, how you should secure this in terms of, in terms of uh, safety of training, and once you do that, you can document it, and that can become your sort of, let's put it metaphorically, points on your list that you need to gather in order to maintain your qualifications as, a, as an instructor. We also want to avoid one thing, if you train a person, and that, but that person progresses in their ranks and becomes, let's say, somebody slightly more important or starts decides about something, it's hard for that person to get out of office. Now, unless you want to lose that person's qualifications, you let him out of office and maintain. Okay, the, the crazy people who climb the roof. 
What is that? <laughs> okay. So we're working on literature for the, during those five years, approximately 35 articles and so approximately 200 pages on modern firefighting were published. As we speak, there is a textbook being written, probably approximately 300 pages, 80% completed. And it will describe nothing more but what's in the basic uh, training program. We will move on when we're ready. And we're proud to say that the number of our, um, the articles describing our, our activities were also published abroad, and that's one example. Uh, we are all the time looking at equipment, really trying to see what's best out there to be the conscious, uh, conscious uh, <laughs> choosers. Is that, a, is that a word? <laughs> choosers. Uh, so whatever there's new, like recently Rosenbauer put out the fan or, you know, uh, different systems, we're constantly testing because I have this saying and I heard this saying, so probably it makes sense if, if at least two people thought the same. Uh, if you're not moving forward, you're not standing in place. You're, you're going back because the world is also moving forward. So that has to be relative progress, not just um, what do you think is progress. So we're constantly looking out there. So one example is we created uh, like a piercing uh, spear. It's, it's a lot bigger than fog nail. It's uh, working on eight bar, but it's a spear that you can drive through a number of um, uh, materials with a hammer. Oh, yeah, yeah, something like that. I mean, th that's one direction that we went. It, it gave us a lot of experience developing that, that tool. And then the fire chief decided, that's actually a nice idea. How about I buy that for every fire station? So it's a nice um, uh, synergic effect, you know, uh, that is coming from this. And as well as here's another Polish solution that we're testing. It's, uh, it, this one is a, a misting high pressure, uh, sort of another type of fog nail, I guess. Then we started looking at uh, health and hygiene. So just symbolically shown, clean your boots, protect your lungs, clean your whatever exposed surfaces, uh, divide your training ground in, into zones. Now, that was a very uh, uncomfortable moment when I received a photograph from a colleague saying, I got into the, the vehicle, I put my BA on, I look at my hands and they're, they're in suit. This place is absolutely filthy. And probably n not a lot of people thought about that before. And it may be surprising to you, but... I'm not ashamed to admit, we have to identify the problem and tackle the problem, yeah? So then, if you're inviting your kids over with the kindergarten, think about that, because they're getting that. Do you want them to get that? And that was done through the uh, CAVTPL. We also issued a, a leaflet that we said to the companies, how about this? We prepare a leaflet, you put your logo on it, you buy it, and you add it to every equipment that you sell we've delivered 15,000 of those. So it's already becoming significant, a significant message. So one example of appreciation is the reward that we got from the Polish, Polish fire trade. Uh, uh, like for, what's, what's, the, what's the term? For general activity, yeah? Uh, uh, sort of like a reward. And we're really uh, a group of people that are happy with doing what we're doing. So I guess that's, that's key. Um, I'll move forward. And we are ident identifying ourselves through a logo. And why is that? Uh, also others. <laughs> Sorry for the poor quality of pictures. It was late night. The gentleman only had a, uh, a cell phone on him. That's why. It's already old knowledge that people have needs and after you meet their physiological needs and safety needs, they have what's called higher needs. Love and belongingness, receiving and giving love, affection, trust, acceptance, affiliating, being part of a group, family, friends, work, whatever kind of group. How do you identify a group? We are all here firefighters. 
Some of us are in another subgroup, firefighters from a different, different country, then from a different fire station or a department or something. We want to give people something to identify with because they need it. And now that has to be positive. Uh, then comes esteem, cognitive, aesthetic, and self-actualization on the top. You are ready to enrich another person. Start the fire in their heart. So that's why we created a number of initiatives. Now, if I may use the term, I believe that's badass. Sort of people identify them with this, yeah? I know we're not fighting the fire demon, professor. But still, that talks to people, metaphorically, yeah? That's why poetry talks to people, yeah? People like poetry. And why is that? I'll explain in the end. Lions, they are symb very symbolic, yeah? Lions on fire, wow. That's also symbolic. Project leader, I've received so many messages that this resonates with people's hearts to the point that people ask me if they can put that in their fire station on the entire wall because they want everybody to hear the message that in this place we value your engagement. And that was from the, the management. So I'm cutting the, the story short, but basically whatever I think about that we were able to do comes back to this. And um, researchers, scientists, they now argue if that's entirely correct or not. Can you fulfill this need without this or the other? It's not exactly important as long as you know the contents of that pyramid and address those people's needs. And psychologists dealing with firefighters say that firefighters beyond money, they need respect, inclusion, empowerment of, or, or opportunity. Now, what's that? Partnership built on professional mission Participation in consultations and decision making, even though if your decision is not accepted, but you've taken part and that's already valuable. Possibility of development. And we believe we're, we're sort of <coughs> starting to deliver that. So if you can belong to a group, that gives you some higher purpose. I wanted to say something about this, but uh, like it was surround yourself uh, with those on the same mission as you. I had a mission to get Paul Grimmel to Austin. It didn't work out. He came to Belgium next year. So that's a fair deal. So we're now at the point that Israel, Africa, Ukraine, Argentina is where we are as CVTPL by going to colleagues and training with them because it's fun. Now, to show the other... Um, Quotation, I will skip that, you all know that. Just try, yeah? Just, you have to go out there and try something because thinking doesn't work, just like we spoke with Lars uh, yesterday. If you had an idea, fine. If you don't do anything, it will say it's an idea. You know this guy? The human race is filled with passion, and that's why we read and write poetry, says, and that's my, says Robin Williams, and that's my final Conclusion before the last slide. We don't mean write poetry because it's cute. We write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. Medicine, law, business, engineering, and all pursuits necessary to sustain life. So my conclusion is, is simple. It's 
repeating Robin Williams' words, what will your verse be? Thank you very much.